Our cities have a problem. Despite craving it, we're struggling for green space, and architects and engineers have had to get creative, repurposing old infrastructure and slotting parks in where they can. It's a pressure that's given rise to this, one of the most ambitious skyscrapers ever conceived. Twisting into the sky, Melbourne's tree-covered South Bank by Beulah Tower is born out of that very real desire for a better connection to nature in our built-up areas. But making Australia's new tallest building a reality is far from easy. And the team is dealing with extreme height, tough site conditions, remote working, international media attention, and the small matter of successfully growing plants in the sky. This is the complex, inspiring and record-breaking story of how the world's first ever super-tall vertical garden is being built. Melbourne's skyline could be transformed by a new state-of-the-art building. Six proposals have been shortlisted after a call went out for ideas from around the world. Cast your mind back to 2018 and you might recall an architecture competition in Australia that caused quite a stir. Australian developer Bueller had acquired a site in the heart of Melbourne's South Bank and wanted to create a building with a difference, something that stood out among the sea of skyscrapers that had already emerged. So in order to bring our ambitious vision to life, we launched an international architecture competition three years ago, inviting some of the world's most innovative architects. It really is unlike anything Australia has ever seen. Pairing local firms with six of the world's most famous architects, the competition produced some of the boldest proposals Australia had ever seen and made international headlines. After an intense debate among the judges and the internet, Green Spine won the contest. Designed by UN Studio and Cox Architecture, the mixed-use towers would feature dramatic planting across their levels and become the tallest skyscrapers in the country. I think what sets the green spine apart from the others is mainly the ability to connect people with nature throughout the biophilic architecture. And the interface between the public street level and the podium were the key standouts. And that was one of the key considerations during the judging process. The design team travelled the world to learn lessons from similar projects, steadily developing their plans to integrate commercial space, apartments, a podium that includes retail units and a new cultural square into 165 storeys of green space across the two towers. The renamed South Bank by Beulah Tower will become the first vertical garden to exceed 300 metres and reach super tall status. Now, building a pair of twisting skyscrapers and covering them in plants was never going to be easy. But combine the challenge of getting those plants to thrive at such a height with the project's slender profile and the fact that it's being built in an area that used to be marshland and you have a pretty major feat of engineering on your hands. The ground conditions uh, at the site of this project are very challenging. We're talking around 20 metres plus of excavation um, into the Coot Island silt material. The way we overcame the challenge was to design uh, what we call diaphragm walls. So these walls are essentially extremely thick concrete walls, They're 1200 to 1500 millimetres thick. And then there's also an extremely thick slab at the base level, which is in the order of two metres thick of concrete. We looked at two different options for the basement design. One of those was a what we call a bottom up or anchored design. The other option we looked at was a top-down construction methodology. You have to plunge down all of your columns and wall elements from the ground floor and then you pour the ground slab. Uh, you then excavate material beneath. You have to leave some large temporary openings in the slab to actually get the material out. You then excavate down two levels, you do it again. So the slab that you build at each level you're excavating down actually restrains the perimeter walls. The East Tower's slender height-to-width ratio of 13.5 to 1 presents some particularly onerous challenges. Its twisting form is being achieved by the use of walking columns. Now, normally, columns line up between floors to carry loads through a building and down to the foundations. But here, each column will have to be slightly offset to the one on the floor immediately below, creating the building's twist while still maintaining a pathway for loads to travel through. If you think that sounds complicated, it's just the start. We've got a central core 
running up throughout the heart of the tower. We've got um, shear walls at all the residential floors linking the central core to the perimeter columns. Then at every plant floor, we've got a series of, um, we've, got, we've got a belt wall around the perimeter and additional outrigger walls in the strong direction. And the way I think about it is like, if you're going skiing, you, your body, imagine that is the core and your arms is like the outrigger walls or your shear walls. Your poles that you're supporting, they're your columns. You're engaging the full perimeter of, of the building. Touching on the damper, you know, in this particular instance is the tune mass damper. That has also presented Yula with the opportunity to create that into an art sculpture. You know, as engineers, you often think, oh yeah, they'll just add some um, pretty ugly looking piece of steel at the top. Um, but really this, this steel can actually be, um, or this mass can actually be quite a uh, magnificent looking art piece. Green spaces on buildings are nothing new, but the scale and ambition of South Bank by Bueller's design is pretty unprecedented. There'll be over five and a half kilometers of vertical gardens and sky parks, extending as high as 365 meters above street level. An international team of landscape architects has run wind testing and sunlight analysis, all to choose species that can thrive in a city that's famous for its extreme summers, cold winters, and the occasional feeling of four different seasons in one day. To keep everything green without the need for an army of gardeners constantly working their way through the building, every garden bed will be connected to an autonomous irrigation system that's capable of monitoring soil conditions and delivering water and nutrients directly to the roots of each plant. The idea is the system should require pretty minimal human maintenance once complete. That's my kind of gardening. Bringing together a complex design between two architects, landscape specialists and several consultants on a challenging site would be tough in any circumstances, but thrown into the mix is the fact that much of the design evolution over the past three years has actually happened remotely, making things even tougher. One of the components alone of the key challenges of being a super tall, slender tower and then the twisting nature of the vertical garden is obviously another key challenge, but both of those combined together, you, you really can't solve that without a computational approach. If we can build that into a centralized computational model, we can make sure that we're you know, getting the best outcomes from both of those key areas of the design. One workflow that we were able to embed into this was the ability to quickly visualize the uh, design through a computational workflow. That, that could be in a 3D model environment where the client could obviously see quick visualizations of the structure. But then we also took that further where we could extract the information into a 2D format very efficiently as well. And let's not forget this is a project that's still in its early journey of its final design um, and we're doing a lot of high-end analysis, or a lot of high-end modelling. So Bluebeam's a, a platform and a software that we find very efficient, very effective in communicating uh, that type of information. So we can connect straight from our computational design model automate uh, plan generation, um, and that can be updated very quickly through the process. So if we make a few key changes to our requirements or to the architectural's design, um, we can update that information very efficiently into our Bluebeam platform. So that's a really key benefit for us, um, early, especially early in the project, to get those efficiencies. Getting the formal green lights in April 2020, South Bank's now seen as a major part of Melbourne's post-COVID economic recovery by the state government. Of course, we'll have to wait and see how construction unfolds to know whether this ambitious project can live up to its expectations and renders. But for whatever lies ahead, South Bank by Bueller is seemingly on track to make a pretty big impact not just by injecting new life into this part of Melbourne and becoming the country's tallest building, but by changing how we think about design in our cities, and proving what can be achieved if we look to make the most from the limited space that most of us now have available. It's a healthy, holistic philosophy, one that integrates great design, technology and ever-evolving lifestyle choices in a leafy, lively, 24-7 precinct. So we are exploring every possibility to create the next evolution of skyscrapers. This video is made possible by Bluebeam. You can learn more about Bluebeam solutions at the link below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.